Hello guys, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Good evening, sir. So guys, are you solving uh, this one? Uh, send a module for organic chemistry. Are you solving those modules? So for alcohols, I just started. Yes, sign with you. Yeah. Louder. Yes, sir. For uh, I started alcohols. Yeah, actually, the thing is, um, uh, for module four and module three, the solution is missing. Okay, I'm trying to get it. Uh, we have uh, given the book for scan so that we can circulate the PDF copies of it. Okay, so now I see this uh, in the in those PDF, a few chapters are missing. It is not there. Okay, so some of you have asked me already uh, for the solution. So I'm trying to get it. Okay, maybe if he, if you know any hard copy is there in the office, then I can you know he can uh, give you the scan copy of it. Okay, so I'm on it. I'm trying to get it. Okay, since the office is closed nowadays, so that's why I'm getting some difficulty into this. So we can use MS Teams, right. right? Yeah. So whenever like I get it, I'll just share with you. Okay. So no worry. Most probably I'll get it soon. Okay. So. Uh, I think last class we were uh, discussing this uh, reduction of reaction, correct? And uh, we had uh, finished reduction. The last reaction we did uh, opener, oxi uh, opener oxidation and MPV reduction, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so let's, today we'll start with, uh, there are no, many more reactions we have to do in this uh, Chapter. So we'll start today with uh, oxidation of aldehyde and ketone. Okay, oxidation of aldehyde and ketone, and then we have to do diols and then reduction reaction. Okay, so write down the heading oxidation of aldehyde and ketone. Okay, so we know aldehydes are good reducing agent, right? Can be easily oxidized, easily oxidized to carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid and hence aldehydes are good reducing agent. Right, these are good reducing agent. Okay. As compared to ketone. Ketones, the oxidation is not that easy. We have already discussed it in a uh, uh, biomolecules, right? So, relatively, oxidation of ketone is difficult, right? Ketone is difficult to oxidize. Difficult to oxidize because there is no hydrogen attached with the carbonyl carbon. Difficult to oxidize. Ketone get oxidized under very drastic condition, very uh, strong, uh, you know, oxidizing agent required for this, like acidified K2Cr207, KMnO4, all these things required, okay? So what are the different reducing agent that can oxidize, sorry, oxidizing agent that can oxidize aldehyde and get reduced itself, okay? So mainly we have three different uh, reducing agent that we use and these are the test of aldehydes and ketones also. So the first one we write down 
टॉलेंस रिएजेंट टेस्ट टॉलेंस रिएजेंट टेस्ट like i told you this that we'll discuss this in oxidation reduction chapter when we were doing biomolecules right tollens reagent test so first of all what is tollens reagent okay tollens reagent is the ammonical solution of silver nitrate nh4oh plus agno3 this is tollens reagent ammonical solution of silver nitrate this question also they ask Uh, sometimes in neat exam not in je but neat they have asked this question many times what is tollens reagent okay now we have this mixture so what happens with this you see uh agno3 reacts with nh4oh and it converts into AgOH plus NH4NO3 ammonium nitrate. AgOH when you heat this two molecules of this, when you heat it converts into silver oxide plus H2O elevated. Now this silver oxide it is a mild reducing agent. Sorry, mild oxidizing agent. mild oxidizing agent and this oxidizes aldehyde into acid okay as the not an issue just now we have started okay this is the first slide we are discussing we are having right so you can copy it down we are discussing oxidation of aldehyde and ketone correct it is a mild oxidizing agent so when you take an aldehyde so this aldehyde goes under oxidation in presence of tollens reagent which gives you which ultimately gives you ag2o so it converts into rco oh and ag2o silver oxide get reduced into silver metal now suppose the tube you have in which the reaction is taking place this silver uh, atom that we have suppose this tube here the reaction is taking place in this tube right so we have here aldehyde and all these reactions taking place here so this silver which comes out here it get deposit deposit onto this tube on the surface of this tube this you can say this is the deposition of silver on its surface this thing right and this appears like a mirror here this deposition of silver this is silver ag and this appears as a mirror when you look at it from outside right and hence this test we also call it as silver mirror test right tollens reagent test or silver mirror test very important okay for all kind of exams it's very very important finish okay now the most important question that they ask here that which of these compounds gives tollens reagent test or a positive tollens test okay so all aldehyde gives sorry sir so could you move to the previous slide just one second we're done sir done okay so this is a very common question that they ask which of these compound shows positive tollens test okay for example you see
एच सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ एच फॉर्मल डिहाइड सी एस थ्री सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ एच एसिटल डिहाइड देन वी हैव बेंजल डिहाइड एसिटोन then we have ch3 coh or h what is this structure could you tell me so that's a hemiacetal hemiacetal very good so it is a hemiacetal structure okay so like i said all aldehyde gives positive tollens test so this one shows this one shows this one shows this won't show this one shows this is also hemiacetal structure or and oh oh or hemiacetal so all these three are hemiacetal structure right so a uh, the tollens reagent what is it again what is it yeah with what's the compound again so i think acha it is the mixture of it what we say it is a ammonical solution of silver nitrate that is nh4no3 nh4oh plus agno3 okay ammonical solution of silver nitrate okay so what is this structure this is acetal structure simple hemiacetal may what we have one oh and one or when we have two or then it is acetal and acetal structure won't show tollens reagent test okay you see this is very very important question they'll give you four five options or suppose eight ten compounds they'll give you in in, in integer type and they'll ask you which one of this shows positive tollens test Okay, just a second, guys. Just a second. Let's copy this down. ha huh. so this is acetal acetal won't show a uh, tollens reagent test okay hemiacetal shows that's why you see uh, in uh, biomolecules we have discussed fructose has keto ketone as a primary functional group but it shows tollens reagent test see actually if you look at the structure the basic medium mechanism we I'll, i'll just discuss this side by side just give me 2 minutes i'll discuss it 
okay so first of all you should know what all compound shows positive tolerance test aldehyde show very simple they won't ask you this usually how they frame questions suppose in neat and all they can give four compounds which of these shows tolerance test or does not show tolerance test or advanced in integer type they can give you eight to ten compounds how many of these molecules structures shows positive tolerance test like this they can ask so simple aldehyde if you have so all will answer this question right aldehyde shows positive tolerance test what is important here you need to keep in mind hemi acetal shows acetal does not show why we will discuss it just a second okay now one more type of compound also shows also shows a uh, positive tolerance test and that is and that is suppose we have this one ch2oh we have here oh and in the second carbon we have c double bond o okay this kind of compound means at if the compound is one hydroxy two keto one hydroxy one hydroxy and two keto compound shows positive tolerance test this is also you need to memorize okay now uh, it is not like i am doing the you know nomenclature of it not like that okay just to to, to name this compound just to have an idea that what kind of compound it is hydroxy and keto group if if present at the adjacent carbon then it shows positive tolerance test that's why we are calling it as one one hydroxy two keto now the question is why does it show the the tolerance test okay so if you look at the reaction the reaction is what the reaction is basic medium reaction because we are taking nh4 oh over there right so this is basic medium oxidation reaction this is important one that you need to keep in mind okay if you look at this because of this it is the basic medium reaction we have basic medium now in basic medium what happens you see if you have hemi acetal structure so from here what happens the base oh minus takes this h plus acidic hydrogen and it converts into its conjugate base which is this plus h2o further what happens when this comes back to form a pi bond here this goes out as a leaving group hence it converts into an aldehyde and when we have aldehyde formation possible then it shows positive tolerance test so actually what happens when you put this molecule into the failing solution medium is basic this converts into aldehyde and hence the solution shows positive tolerance test but it is not possible with this acetal structure because we do not have acidic hydrogen here did you get it yes sir yes so we do not have acidic hydrogen so hence acetal won't show positive tolerance test okay why this one will show because you can draw the tautomer of it in basic medium you can draw the tautomerism of the tautomers of it tautomers if you draw between this one one two and three so what we get here we get ch single bond oh and from the third carbon this ox hydrogen comes over here on the first carbon we have a double bond here oh and then r further we can draw one more tautomeric structure of it between 1 2 and 3 sorry we'll go this way 1 2 and 3 third say ha huh, okay so from the third this hydrogen comes over on the first carbon and this pi bond shift over here so eventually this converts into what you see it converts into an aldehyde that's why one two hydroxy group also shows positive tolerance test did you get it
So, sir, if we had a hemiacetal structure instead of OR, if we had some other leaving group like I, will that also show tolerance test? Ah, uh, possible. If you have good leaving group here attached, then it it may convert into aldehyde and it shows. So, this is an idea I am giving. Usually, they ask questions for hemiacetal and all, but obviously, the purpose of this OR is what? That it behaves as a leaving group when this lone pair forms a pi bond here. Correct. So whenever you have a living group present here, a good living group, okay, then it shows Tollens test. Here it is keto form, uh, Sai Vaidya. C double bond O is more stable. Keto form is generally more stable than enol. No doubt in this. Correct. So to sum up this, what we can say. Tollens reagent test or Tollens test is given by all aldehydes plus hemiacetal plus one two hydrox one hydroxy two ketone group. One hydroxy two keto means at adjacent carbon we have double bond O and OH present. Correct. Okay. Next. So the Tollens reagent test, it is a basic medium reaction. Okay. Second one, we have failing solution test. Failing solution test. So failing solution test is what we take in this case, we take two solutions and we call it as failing one, failing two or solution one, solution two, failing A, failing B like that. Okay. Suppose we have failing one. This solution is aqueous CuSO4 and failing two is Failing two is sodium potassium sodium potassium tartrate. Sodium potassium tartrate is this OH OH COOK COONA H H. This is sodium potassium tartrate. Okay. The combination of this two is failing solution. This plus this is failing solution. Okay. Now you see, first of all, this one, the sodium potassium tartrate that we have, what is it a salt? Right? Is this a salt? What kind of salt it is? This the salt of basic salt the salt of weak acid weak acid and a strong base correct and since we have a strong base so its solution is what its solution is basic basic and hence it is basic salt and it is basic solution basic salt so it gives what oh minus in the solution so you can take here any basic salt usually it is a name uh, reaction failing solution test so we take sodium potassium tartrate okay Solution is basic gives OH minus. Now this OH minus reacts with Cu2 plus, which is there in the first solution, failing solution one. Cu plus two plus two OH minus, it converts into CuOH whole twice hydroxide. And when you heat this, it converts into CuO, CuO plus H2O. This is an oxidizing agent now. It gets reduced into Cu plus and oxidizes aldehyde into acid. Okay, so the reaction is RC double bond OH plus CuO, the oxidizing agent. It converts this aldehyde into acid and CuO converts into Cu2O. Right? 
the cu2 also capable of oxidizing any aldehyde left the cu2o again serves as an oxidizing agent converts aldehyde into acid and copper metal so this is the reaction again this reaction is basic medium oxidation reaction basic medium okay here also the compound that shows the compound that shows a failing solution test are aldehydes generally ketone does not show this test we get a brick red color of it the copper oxide or this we get we have a brick red color of it that confirms the in some book they have written simply red only but brick red or red we can say not that important okay so aldehyde shows this test again failing solution test okay so hcho hcho gives this test okay cs3 cho gives this test benzyl dehyde is an exception it does not gives failing solution test it does not give failing solution test it is an exception okay tollens reagent uh, tollens test is given a benzyl dehyde but Failing solution is not given a benzyl dehyde. Must remember this; it is an exception. If you take a ketone, ketone also does not show this test, right? Hemiacetyl, hemiacetyl shows this test, right? One two hydroxy keto also shows this test. so everything is similar the only difference here is that benzyl dehyde does not show this test no we can say aromatic aldehyde does not give this test okay one more see this one is also basic medium uh, test one more test we have which is exactly similar to failing solution test and the name of this one is benedict solution test benedict solution test okay like i said it is exactly similar to failing solution the only difference is we have cu so4 aqueous here right plus we have sodium citrate here sodium citrate the failing the you know failing two is different over here there we have sodium potassium tartrate it is sodium citrate okay cu so4 same we have So uh, sir, for the previous the thing, hemiacetyl didn't give it an acetyl. I mean, hemiacetyl gave an acetyl didn't, right? Yes. Okay, sir. C H three C O O N A. Here we have C H three C O O N A, and here we have O H. Okay, this is sodium citrate. now when you look at this compound sodium citrate is it a basic solution it is the salt of what weak acid and a strong base again naoh 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 strong base this is also a basic salt gives oh minus ion in the solution and once you get oh minus ion again cu2 plus reacts with oh minus after this all those reactions are same like we had in failing solution
Dan. So these three tests we have given by aldehyde. Okay. It is a basic medium test. Okay. The first two failing and tolerance are the most important one. Okay. Now the next we are going to see some acidic medium test. Only two we have into this one. Not much important this one. Acidic medium test. Sir. Acidic. Yeah. Sir, could you go back to that Benedict one? Just a second. I did not write down the entire reaction. You get OH minus. After this, it is same as we had in a uh, failing solution. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So we have only two, uh, you know, test here in acidic medium and it is not important. Okay. Acidic medium test. The first one you write down, we have HGCl2 test. HGCl2 test. What happens in this? We take aldehyde with HGCl2, two molecules of it in presence of water. It converts into an acid plus we'll get white color of Hg2Cl2. So HgCl2 can further react with aldehyde. Just we have this reaction, nothing much into this one. H2O, it converts into acid again. Plus we get 2Hg and 2HCl. This is what the reaction we have, acidic medium reaction. The color of Hg that we get here is grayish black or gray black also we can say. Okay. Copy this down. Okay. Next write down the second test we have. And in this one, we do not have a reaction also. This you need to know one property. So can you go back to the previous slide? So one second. Yeah. Yes, possible because. So does the HG, HGCl2 test uh, Oxidize uh, benzaldehyde. Ah, huh, it's possible. It can oxidize aldehyde. It can oxidize. If there is any exception, we'll discuss that. We have exception only one. That is for this one, uh, failing solution test, which could not oxidize benzaldehyde. Otherwise, it is true for aldehydes or aldehydes. So even Benedict can't do uh, benzaldehyde, then, right? Yes, it's Benedict true. also won't. That's what I said. Okay. Felling and Benedict's are similar reaction. They cannot oxidize uh, benzaldehyde into benzoic acid. That is the only difference change we have, exception we have actually. Yes, sir, done. Okay. Now, the another one here, 
the another one is a uh, shifts reagent test shift reagent you just need to know what happens into this reaction is also not uh, required in this one okay so what is what is a shift reagent shift reagent is it is rosa aniline rosa aniline hydrochloride this is a shift reagent rosa aniline hydrochloride the color of this is pink or magenta pink or magenta color rosa aniline hydrochloride when this is allowed to react with sulfur dioxide in the first step this get oxidized so we'll write down here oxidized form of this we get oxidized form of it which is colorless so first of all the pink or magenta color so to decolorize the rosa aniline hydrochloride or stiff reagent now the test of aldehyde is what in this colorless solution if you have add aldehyde then this aldehyde restores the color of the stiff reagent so what we get this aldehyde get oxidized into acid here and this will get reduced into rosa aniline hydrochloride that is stiff reagent so we get back a stiff reagent when we add aldehyde into it and this color is again pink or magenta so what we say the test of aldehyde is what that it restores the color of stiff reagent in the reaction and that is the test of aldehyde stiff reagent test nothing much you need to know into this one only one thing which is also not at all important but the structure of rosa aniline hydrochloride i am drawing it here but whenever they ask they'll write down the name only overall the reaction is not that important sir i had a doubt tell me sir uh, why does glucose not give uh, shifts reagent test glucose glucose yeah yeah sir it i read that uh, it doesn't give uh, shifts uh, reagent test <laughs> it does not give right yeah why just a second okay so glucose has hydroxy as well as aldehyde group also present correct medium is it is an acidic medium reaction because you have hydrogen chloride hcl acidic medium reaction what happens the hydroxy group reacts with this and it goes under dehydration right the lone pair on oxygen atom in aldehyde right and the hydroxy group the lone pair you see both has tendency to react okay but the lone pair on oxygen in aldehyde group and this one if you see so hydroxy group has oh linkage so when it get protonates then it then h2o easily eliminates when oxygen protonates that ends up getting a carbocation when the pi bond shift so stability is not there that much okay and when here we have the pro, the you know carbocation forms over there that is more stable than the other one that's why usually the aldehyde group of glucose does not go under shift reagent test the medium is what the medium is acidic here hence it is okay hydroxy group takes part in the reaction aldehyde group does not convert into acid into that okay so this is rosa aniline hydro chloride three benzene ring we have here not three two benzene ring double bond nh we have here dot hcl this is also benzene ring this is the rosa aniline hydrochloride obviously they won't give you this structure they'll write down the name only okay usually what they ask question this like one 
this question glucose wala question they ask in biomolecules in general in that chapter you may, may you maybe you get those you know, reaction but in aldehyde and ketone what they ask that which of these molecules restores the color of stiff reagent like that they frame the question so you need to take aldehyde over there not any other compound ketone or acid okay this is the only question that they ask you they won't even ask you ha huh, they may ask you the name what is stiff reagent but they won't even ask you the structure of rosa aniline hydrochloride okay so over here even hemiacetal won't give it right no no hemiacetal we have only in basic medium not in acidic okay. okay then only if basic medium is there then only that acidic halogen goes out no? and that converts into aldehyde yes sir. okay so these are the five best of aldehyde we have discussed three in basic medium tolens reagent felling solution and benedict solution and two in acidic medium hcl2 and stiff reagent test okay now write down oxidation of ketone oxidation of ketone also we have two three actually methods here right again the two methods how to write down the product we have to see the mechanism is not there okay so write down the oxidation of ketone but the last one that is bayer villiger oxidation there will discuss the mechanism like i said ketone is difficult to oxidize the oxidation takes place in drastic condition of ketone okay so if you have any ketone we can use the oxidizing agent as hot acidified kmno4 or k2cr2o7 this we can use okay oxidizing agent of ketone what we need to do here if you have any ketone i'm just trying to tell you how to write down the product in this so we always write down we always write down the enol form of this ketone that is oh here and double bond enol form of this in the some of the reaction of ketone also you see we always draw the enol form first and then we'll write down the reaction those reactions will see in that particular chapter okay so how to write down the product first you write down enol form of it and then you write down the product according to oxidative ozonolysis so this reaction is similar to this reaction is similar to oxidative ozonolysis what we get in oxidative ozonolysis what is the difference we have in oxidative ozonolysis so there is no zinc so no zinc so we won't get aldehyde but we get acid yes sir correct so what you need to memorize here just from ketone you write down the enol form i am not discussing the mechanism that won't help you okay ketone you write down the enol and then enol from enol you write down the oxidative ozonolysis product so could you tell me the oxidative ozonolysis of this what you will get ethanoic acid plus methanoic acid ethanoic and methanoic yes sir okay so how do we write down see the reagent is this only the reagent is h plus k2cr2o7 or kmno4 reagent is this only but the product will write down similar to the oxidative ozonolysis so this bond you have to break and you have to add double bond o and double bond o here so here we have double bond o and oh and here what we get o double bond c has two hydrogen but since it is oxidative so we'll get here oh not h
okay so further this one is not stable because we have two oh present on the same carbon atom h2o molecules eliminate and it converts into carbon dioxide So, so what is that can... compound called the second one this one yes sir uh we can say this is a uh there's like one general name is not there but we can say it is a um diol we can say diol form of um uh, what we can say um a methanone so right. Would see, yes, we have sir. two functions. Would we call it dihydroxy methanol? Ha ha ha! That that way you can IUPAC name you can say like that because we have two hydroxy group present. So it is methanol first of all. So dihydroxy methanol IUPAC name you can say. But common name in general we can say it is a derivative of uh, you know uh, ketone or uh, diol simply we can say the common name. IUPAC name will be one carbon double bond O. So it is methanol. Two OH present, so it is dihydroxy methanol. Okay, so yes, two sir. OH on this carbon is not stable. H two O eliminates from CO two. The product will be an acid and carbon dioxide. Okay, so all the molecules you'll write down like this only. First, you write down the enol form of it, and then oxidative ozonolysis. Write down the product in this one. means the question will be like this i'll show you the question the question will be like this obviously they won't give you the reversible sign here this goes under h plus kmno4 this is the question actually now what we'll do to write down the product we'll write down the enolic form of this most more stable enol that will be this oh here and double bond here the other one will be the Less stable minor product. Okay. Now after this, we'll do the oxidative ozonolysis, and hence this converts into right. This bond will break, and add double bond or double bond. So what we get here? CH three C double bond O. This carbon. This side we have H. So OH. Plus CS three COOH, so two molecules of this we get oxidative ozonolysis. We won't get aldehyde into this one. Write down the product in this two.
Done? Yes, I do. Okay. So first of all, we'll write down the in all form of it. The in all form would be this. And then we have oxidative ozonolysis. So that would be One, two, three, four, five carbon, correct. Double bond OOH, double bond OOH. This is the product we get, right? This one we have four. So we have one, two, three, and four double bond OOH, one, two, three, four, five over there. So we have double bond OOH. Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Dioic, ioic acid we get here. Okay, so just will write down the enol form and then oxidative ozonolysis will write down the product. Now the second one we have selenium dioxide, the second compound, SeO2. This is also a very simple one. You just need to know the reagent and what it does in the reaction. So suppose we have the oxidation of this compound you need to do with SeO2. So what you have to do here at the adjacent carbon of C double bond O, just a second, you take up. Write down. Yes, those oxidizing agents which can oxidize ketone, they are strong oxidizing agents because oxidation of ketone is not easy. Okay, so in this case, what do you have to do? Just adjacent carbon to the carbonyl carbon, you have to add one double bond O. hydrogen that is it another example you see you'll get it ph c double bond o ch3 with seo2 so obviously on this phenyl group we cannot add so it will be ph c double bond o this carbon will have one more double bond o and one hydrogen attached to it Okay, one more reaction. Suppose we have double bond O like this, cyclohexanone. The product of this would be on any adjacent carbon, you just add double bond O like this. This is the product of the solution. Now, this is also used to form, to form or to attach hydroxy group on the allylic carbon. Copy down this first, I'll go to the next page and then I'll write down. So this one, the allylic carbon, this is a bit important. Only one point you have to keep in mind. Okay, like the last class we have discussed, MnO2 can oxidize only allylic um, alcohol, right? Similarly, here what happens at allylic position, OH group you have to attach. That is it. Suppose we have double bond, CH3CH, double bond CH2, alkene. If you have ketone, 
then you have to add double bond O on the adjacent carbon. That is it. Done. But you have, if you have alkene, then on the allylic carbon, we'll have a hydroxy group. This is the product in this reaction. Just a second, I'll go back. Okay, so these two reactions you have to memorize. Okay, for all these oxidation and reduction reaction, the mechanism is not you know, given. If, if you find out this in, in some good books, some higher standard books if you study, it is quite complex also. So if you look at the mechanism, then also you're not going to write down the mechanism in the exam and get the answer. They won't ask that question because there's no possibility here just need to add OH over here, right? So it's not like some D2O or H2O we are using so that it will change the product, nothing. These kind of reactions, no, you need to memorize it this way only. At allylic position, OH you have to add. What is important here, I'll tell you. The important is what? The rate of this reaction, write down, the ROR, rate of this reaction, it is, it follows this order. Two degree carbon has highest rate then one degree and then three degree. This is the rate of the allylic carbon we have, reaction at allylic carbon. Means if you have two degree allylic carbon, then OH group present at two degree allylic carbon, then one degree and then three degree. For example, suppose we have cyclohexene. Cyclohexene the reaction with SeO2. Obviously, this is allylic, this is allylic. Both are two degree, correct? Both are two degree. So anywhere you add OH, this is the answer for this question. But if you have a compound, say like this, with SeO2, this carbon is what? This carbon is allylic carbon. This carbon is allylic carbon. But this one is two degree and this one is one degree. So OH group get attached at secondary carbon. That is this one. Done. Finish. One more example, you see. This is one degree, this is two degree, and this is quaternary. There's no hydrogen present here. The reaction takes place obviously at two degree. So we get OH here. This is the answer for this. So I would suggest this two reaction for, for SeO2, you must remember mechanism is not at all required for this reaction. Uh, no, uh, not like that here. First of all, we won't take this SeO2 in excess. Okay. Still, we have one more, uh, you know, hydrogen present here. Right? So, we won't take that maximum of, uh, like, you know, excess of SeO2 and all these positions uh, oxidation takes place. We generally don't consider that. Okay. So in a molecule, at only one point and one, only one carbon, the oxidation takes place. And you will have option also, so you can go through by option, but usually it is not possible. They won't ask you that. Okay. Now, the last one, the oxidation of ketone is, we have bare villager oxidation. It is again a name reaction. And this one is important also. Write down the third one. Bare villager oxidation oxidation reaction.
done we have able okay what is bayer villiger oxidation bayer villiger oxidation reaction is the reaction of aldehyde or ketone it is given for ketone first but since it can oxidize ketone it can also oxidize aldehyde so aldehyde and ketone oxidize from this particular reaction right so if you have a ketone suppose r1 c double bond o r2 and we use a peroxy acid for this purpose peroxy acid we use which converts this into r1 c double bond o o r2 that is it the product we get so it is ketone and on this oxidation ketone converts into esters that is what the bayer villiger oxidation we have so ketone into ester yes yes so any peroxy acid works here sorry does any peroxy acid work here anywhere any peroxy acid you can take okay we'll show you some Or example about work right sorry formaldehyde won't work right formaldehyde nahi that also possible it converts into formic acid then okay okay yeah okay converts into formic acid possible i'll discuss the mechanism i'll discuss but first of all you know again for this one also mechanism you are not going to write in the exam so you should know that how to write down the product so what we'll do carbonyl carbon and one of the alkyl group will attach or insert one oxygen atom between the carbonyl group and one of the alkyl group which alkyl group is the question where you have to insert this side or this side this alkyl group or this alkyl group so the alkyl group suppose i have inserted over here right it means this alkyl group is the better migrator the alkyl group which is a better migrator you have to insert oxygen between that alkyl group and the carbonyl group clear that is what we need to know now to do this question what you need to know just first of all we know better electron donors are better migrators first thing is that second thing the migratory aptitude which we have already discussed the migratory aptitude you should know for this particular question this particular reaction we'll discuss the mechanism here but these two things you know you can do this you don't require mechanism for this migratory aptitude you know we may have both side hydrogen we may have present so the migratory aptitude of hydrogen is maximum then we have 3 degree then we have 2 degree then we have phenyl okay then we have 1 degree and then we have methyl so this is the migratory aptitude in general we write on this means what happens could you tell me the product in this one suppose if i take this one ch3 c double bond o h with suppose one peroxy acid i am taking ch3 cooh what we get here ethyl ethyl acid ch3 c double bond o oh that is it hydrogen and methyl which one is the better migrator hydrogen so we'll insert oxygen between this carbonyl group and this hydrogen this is the answer okay if you have this cf3coh what is the answer we get which one is the better migrator this one is 2 degree this one is 1 degree 2 degree is the better migrator than 1 degree so we'll insert oxygen here and it converts into a five member six member ring double bond o any doubt in this
Is it fine? Tell me. Understood? No doubt. So, is there like a acid which is like most commonly used in this kind of thing, like peroxy acid? Ah, uh, CF three COH we use most commonly. We can also use MCPBA, metachlorobenzoic acid. Oops. These are the most commonly used. So, but how does CF three COH have peroxy linkage? I missed this. Oh. Okay, peroxy. Okay, any peroxy acid you can take. Fine. So this is how we'll write down the product. Just you need to know this one. That is it. Okay, migratory aptitude. You need to apply and insert one oxygen. Now, what is the mechanism of this reaction? See the mechanism. Okay, so what happens? We have suppose a ketone RC double bond O R two and a peroxy uh, acid. Suppose we have H O O C double bond O and R. This is a peroxy acid. So what happens? The oxygen which attached to the hydrogen in peroxy acid. This oxygen, not this one. This oxygen, it donates its lone pair of electron, lone pair of electron onto this carbon atom, and this pi electron shift onto this oxygen. And why this happens? Because once it donates, oxygen get positive charge. Then H plus, this H plus, comes out to stabilize the positive charge on the carbon atoms. So if I write down this in one step. We'll get this R one C O minus R two O O C double bond O R. Did you understand this H plus? Clear? Yes. Any doubt? No. Okay. Now what happens in this? Since we have peroxy linkage, this bond is not stable. We have electron-electron repulsion here. This plus sigma bond takes up by is taken up by this particular oxygen. Okay, it goes out, creating a vacant orbital onto this oxygen. So R one C O minus single bond O two lone pair. And a vacant orbital, positive charge under this oxygen. This R two will be as it is. Okay. Now, this takes this H plus forms R C O one. This goes out as a leaving group, Lg. Plus R C double bond O O minus goes out as a leaving group. Now, here what happens? The one R one or R two, it is an irreversible reaction. The one which is the better migrator. R one or R two. Suppose R two is a better migrator. It takes this sigma electron pair, and this rearranges itself onto this oxygen because it has one vacant orbital can take this two electron onto this. So in this way, what happens? We get R one C O minus O R two, and this carbon has positive charge to neutralize this. This sigma electron, uh, this lone pair. Forms a pi bond here, so R one C double bond O O R two. Again, I am telling you, this mechanism is fine, but you have to write down the product direct. You don't have to think of mechanism over here.
Ben? Okay. Write down the product in this reaction. CH3, C double bond O, PH. With suppose, with suppose MCPBA. Meta chloro per benzoic acid. Nothing. I'll, you can, uh, you know, keep it with you. I'll just write down. You just cross check. So, which one is a better migrator? Phenyl. PH or CH3? Phenyl. Phenyl. PH is a better migrator, right? So, we'll add O between this C double bond O and PH. The product is CH3, C double bond O, O PH. Here, three degrees better migrator. So the product is O C double bond O C S three. Hydrogen is a better migrator. O H. This converts into a six member ring, including oxygen present in the ring. Answer is this. Okay. Fine. So this is the oxidation of ketones. So Only three. Yeah. So isn't the second one quaternary? This one? No, this carbon is this. Ca no, we are talking about, we are not talking about with respect to this. This carbon attached with one, two, three. Hence, it is tertiary here. Tertiary oh. group attached to this carbon. Primary group, this methyl group attached to this carbon. That is what oh. it means. Yes. Okay, so three different reactions we have seen. One is the reaction of reaction of what SeO2. The first one is H plus KMnO4, H plus K2Cr2O7, acidified KMnO4, K2Cr2O7. Second one is selenium dioxide, SeO2. And third one is bare villager oxidation. Bare villager, we need to apply migratory aptitude. SeO2, we have two types of reaction. One is for ketone, one is for alcohol, sorry, alkene. In case of alkene, we'll get OH on the allylic carbon. And when we have ketone, then adjacent carbon will have a double bond O. That is it. Okay. These are the three reactions, three oxidation of, uh, oxidation reactions of ketone. Now the other one, write down, the oxidation of diol. Okay, oxidation of diol. Only few reactions. Just one, uh, you know, um, reagent we use for this purpose. Again, mechanism is not required here. That is HiO4. What do you need to do? Suppose you have any diol, for example, CH2OH, 
CH2OH. With HiO4, if you heat this, okay, then what happens here? The carbon carbon bond dissociates. This bond dissociates, and you have to attach OH with this carbon and OH with this carbon. Means at adjacent position, if you have OH or in that case, suppose functional group like aldehydes present, then also it is possible. Adjacent carbon contains OH on reaction with HiO4. This carbon carbon bond dissociates and we add OH group on each carbon atom. Plus the same thing we get from the lower carbon, that is this. Which further converts into HCHO plus H2O, and this also converts into HCHO plus H2. This is the product in this reaction. Just you need to dissociate to break the carbon carbon bond, right? And product you need to write down. Similarly, you see what is the product we get in this reaction. I'll write down the next page. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll get here double bond O and H, double bond O and H, plus we'll get two molecules of water. Yes or no? So HiO4 is a good oxidizing agent, right? So does aldehyde remain aldehyde or does it become acid? No, it will be aldehyde only here. It won't convert uh, this aldehyde into acid here. The final product in case of uh, uh, aldehyde will be, uh, in case of diol will be an aldehyde. If it is forming an acid, I'll show you some more example. If you are getting an acid directly, not by the oxidation of aldehyde, then the product will be an acid means aldehyde won't further oxidize into acid. Okay. Yes, sir. So it is a good oxidizing agent, but not good enough to oxidize aldehyde into acid. Okay. This one you see. Write down the product in this. Again, you see, this group is not at the adjacent position, right? So this won't oxidize.
So the first one, what happens? Is it three molecules of HCHO? These two will break, right? Oh, both will have, break. Yeah, that's what even I got. H2 C O H O H first plus H and we get three hydroxy group attached to this carbon. And the last one is also this H2 C O H O H. I'm sorry. Correct. Now from this water eliminates it converts into HCHO water eliminates it converts into HCHO water eliminates it converts into HCO H formic acid. So two molecules of formaldehyde and one molecule of acid. Uh, how does how does it become three hydroxy groups in the second structure? Is it See, to satisfy OH the valency? Huh. No, no, one OH is already present. Okay, this bond breaks one OH here, one OH here. Oh, this okay. bond breaks one OH here, one OH. Here. Right. Okay. The middle one, two sigma bond breaks, and and hence two OH on the carbon. For a given carbon atom, the number of sigma bond you are breaking equal number of hydroxy group you have to attach. Methanol ruchir, I guess. Not methanol. Yes, sir. I mean that. Methanol. Yeah. Okay. So now in this, what happens? This one you have to break this carbon carbon bond. So we'll get this one forms what if I can write down this it is HCHO one molecule. Yes or no. And this one won't get oxidized. So from this to this carbon it will be as it is. So we have CH2OH. The lower carbon is this, then the middle one is this. And this one has two OH present this side OH this side OH converts into C double bond O H. This is the product we get. Plus number of water molecules if you count, it will be 2 H2. Okay, so this is it for oxidation reaction. We have done alkene, alkyne, alcohol, uh, then aldehyde, ketone, diol. Okay, all these things we have done oxidation reduction. Next reaction we write down reduction reaction. Okay, so like oxidation reaction, we use various oxidizing agent. So for reduction reaction also, we use various reducing agent. Various reducing agent, correct? So what all these reducing agents we have? The first one is, first one is LiAlH4. It is lithium aluminum hydride.
lithium aluminium hydride okay this li lh4 it is a coordination compound coordination compound will study coordination chemistry that is uh, there in inorganic chemistry we'll do that chapter also and we'll discuss this coordination compound in detail into that chapter okay it is a coordination compound which we also call it as complex compound complex compound why complex compound because it has a complex part present into it because if you look at the structure of this the bonding here we have li plus and we have alh4 minus this is the actual structure we have okay so coordination compound is like this only for example you see k4 fe cn6 it is also a coordination compound complex compound so you always write down one part in a square bracket and one part outside the square bracket okay so there is this part which is written in the square bracket we call it as coordination sphere coordination sphere and which is written outside the square bracket we call it as ionization sphere it is not related to this uh, you know reduction reaction but just i am giving you a bit of idea of coordination compound okay like normal compound these coordination compound won't lose its identity in the solution completely like suppose nacl if you add so it dissociates completely in water na plus aqueous cl minus aqueous this also will dissociate but this part loses its identity completely but the part which is written in the square bracket this is the complex part and since it does not lose its identity into the solution hence we are calling it as complex this is one aspect in which these kind of compounds differs from the normal compound and we call it as complex compound it does not lose its identity into the solution here also you see if you dissolve this in water k plus will lose but this one this square bracket this ion won't lose its identity into the solution right this is the basic difference between a normal and the coordination compound okay so one more difference we have like in this we have two types of valencies primary valency and secondary valency so all these things in detail will study in the chapter called coordination compound a very conceptual chapter the only conceptual chapter of inorganic chemistry where you can have you can apply concept and you can get the answer sure sure you will get one questions from that in your je exam okay any exam you will get questions from that if you are going to write neat exam then you will get two three questions at least from that particular chapter and this one part of this coordination compound is the isomerism also so the isomerism that we have done already and this chapter they mix that two chapters and forms one question of isomerism so there are different 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 types of questions you will get from this chapter most important one the only chapter conceptual chapter which you can understand and it is coding also if you understand it properly you will definitely get a uh, you know correct answer into this one ha huh. there are few things that you need to memorize here also few things like you know some 10 15% you need to memorize but then you uh, know the other things you can understand it easily so li alh4 is a complex compound correct now you see what happens this part you look at the structure of this part alh4 minus it is a reducing agent so obviously it gives h minus hydride ion to the solution right so alh4 minus is this al with aluminum we have four hydrogen attach negative and around this we have li plus present like this this you can write in a square bracket aluminum hydrogen bond here right it is it has more ionic character and less covalent character here its ionic character is more aluminum hydrogen bond its ionic character is more more in the sense that if you look at the next reducing agent right nabh4 so there the ionic character is less so i am writing down this ionic character is more 
in the context of NABH code that you must mention over there. Ionic character is more in comparison to NABH code. So because of this, what happens since it has any character, so this Li ALH4, this ALH4 minus Li plus, there is no role for this. It just neutralizes the ion over there, right? The major thing is this Li ALH4 minus ionic bond is, you know, weaker bond we have here. So it easily converts into ALH3 and releases hydride ions, H minus. Oh, I'm sorry, I've written ALH4 here. It is ALH3. It forms ALH3. So aluminium also becomes neutral here, you see, and re releases hydride ions. So because of this hydride ion, since it releases, so it is what? It is a, it shows the reducing character. Any doubt here? No. NABH4 we'll discuss after this. First, we'll see the reaction of LiAlH4. Again, here also, we have for certain reactions, we have mechanism. Certain reactions I'll give you where the mechanism is not required. So again, I'll suggest you understand the reaction that way only, how to write down the product, okay? Now, NABH4, you see, like I said, here we have more ionic character. NABH4, we have more, less ionic character, little bit more covalent character in comparison to LiAlH4. So BH4 ions that you have over there, the BH bond is stronger than the ALH bond. Hence, for BH4 minus, it is comparatively difficult to lose hydride ion. That's why NABH4 is a weaker reducing agent in comparison to LiAlH4. Did you understand this? Don't write this NABH4 all apart right now. We'll discuss NABH4 separately and then you can write it down. Did you get it? So NABH4 is a weaker reducing agent than LiAlH4 because of a stronger boron and hydrogen bond, relatively. Correct? This is the one point you must remember. Now we know alcohol, primary alcohol on oxidation gives aldehyde. Correct? So aldehyde on reduction, what it should give? Alcohol alcohol one degree so it is exactly ulta correct one degree alcohol on oxidation gives aldehyde aldehyde on reduction gives alcohol two degree alcohol on oxidation gives ketone so ketone on reduction gives two degree alcohol got it so we'll see that this basic thing you must remember right everything is based on this information only alcohol to aldehyde aldehyde to alcohol and ketone as well correct so we'll see the reaction first of all, and then we'll discuss here the mechanism also, okay? This reaction, the mechanism is important. Wherever it is important, required, I'll tell you to understand the mechanism, okay? Don't worry for that. Okay, suppose we have ketone, aldehyde ketone, the reduction of aldehyde ketone we are discussing. So whenever you see from now onwards, whenever you see, what did I write? Whenever you see LiAlH4 or NaBH4, right, you should see H minus, not LiAlH4, because the reaction is because of H minus that is coming out from LiAlH4 minus. Agreed? No doubt? So suppose we have ketone like this. And what did I use? In the first step, I use LiAlH4. And in the second step, I use H plus H2. So acidic hydrolysis in the second step. We always use it. Acidic hydrolysis in the second step. Okay. So what, what this uh, reducing agent gives, could you tell me? Two degree alcohol. H. This gives H minus. H minus, yes. H minus. So from here, you get H minus. Now this H minus, you see uh, how easily you can understand this. RNGX re reaction, you remember, right? Nucleophilic addition. So what happens from RNGX? We get R minus and that R minus attacks on what? Attacks on carbon and carbon. Here we 
not have r minus but we have what we have we have h, h minus. minus any doubt no tell me come on no doubt right so this h minus what happens this h minus attacks onto this carbonyl carbon and this will push the electron on this oxygen exactly similar to the reaction that we had in the case of rmgx got it so this here the product that we get r1 c o minus h r2 this is the first step we have now in the second step we are using acidic hydrolysis h plus h2o so this o minus converts into what converts into oh r2 and h here you see ketone converts into 2 degree alcohol so the h will go out as h plus right sorry so the h should go out as h plus right this one no 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 not this one oh this oh one sorry sir sir oh, yeah sorry my bad this h plus simply will attach onto this got it understood the mechanism right so what is important here why mechanism is important in this reaction i am telling you uh, could you tell me the product in this reaction mm, the reaction is this suppose i am taking Tell me the product here. Ethanol. Could you tell me the formula here we get? So CH3 CDH. We get here CS three COH D H. What happened if you take here D plus D two O? So then O D. Yeah. So you should know the hydrogen that attach with this carbon. What is the source of this hydrogen? Could you tell me the source of this hydrogen? L I A L H four, right? So this hydrogen, which attached with this carbon, the source of this is it comes from the reducing agent L I A L H four, and this comes from this comes from the solvent that we are yeah. using, that is H two. No doubt. So that's why in this type of uh, you know reaction, the mechanism is important, where you know when this thing change li d4 or suppose li alh4 d plus d2o then you should know the carbon the carbonyl carbon which is gaining hydrogen one on carbon and one on oxygen so from where these two hydrogens are coming onto this only this thing is important here after this we have same thing if you have ketone then two degree alcohol aldehyde then one degree alcohol. any doubt in this right Reduction reaction we know it is the addition of hydrogen. So hydrogen is getting attached. Reduction is taking place. No doubt. Okay, one more thing here. It is important that you already know that this carbon becomes what? This carbon becomes chiral carbon uh -huh. now. So it has two form R and S. 
that always you have okay that kind of question so i'm giving you some question write down the product in this li alh4 h plus h2 CS3, C double bond O CS3, same reagent, Li LH4, H plus H2. Li ALH4, D plus D2. So here the product is CS3OH. Here the product is CS3CH, CS3OH. Here the product is, we get OD here and H finished. Write down the product in this one. This one you have done. A is what? No doubt in this. After this, what happens? So minus H two. Dehydration reaction. 
S N one mechanism, right? So H plus comes over here. H two O goes out. So we'll get a carbocation there. That is C H two, C H two positive charge plus H two O. Next, what happens? Hydride shift. Hydride shift. With hydride shift, we'll get this one. CH CH three positive charge. Then what happens? The ring expansion. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll get a five-membered ring, and the positive charge will be at the second carbon, which is this. Suppose so first we'll have one methyl group, and here we have one positive charge. Then what happened next? Hydride shift. Again, hydride shift. So this converts into this, and a positive charge here. After this, what happens? After this, we'll get an alkene. H plus comes out from the adjacent carbon, means the alpha carbon. So the possible product is one of the product is this. Another product is this. Any other product possible? Second one will be more stable here. Yes, second one is more stable. Any other product possible here? No, right? Because this double bond and this double bond is the same molecule. So these two product possible. This one is the major product. So, so in the first one, we'll, we'll get R and S, right? In the second one, we'll get. No, sir. In the first product, like in the question one. This one or this one? No, yeah, that in one. In this one, you'll get R and S. Yeah. If they ask you the number of product, including studio isomers, R and S two product will get here. So this funda that you know, wherever it is applicable, will apply that. Okay. In this case, you see, for this molecule, we have geometrical isomerism possible here. This shows GI. Right across this double bond. So cis and trans or EZ. Isomers possible here, E and G. So number of product, if they ask you in this one, it will be two plus one minor. That is three product will get. Got it? Yes, sir. So, tell me the number of product possible. In this molecule, this is methyl, and this is allowed to react with Li AlH four with H plus H two. Two product, okay. Okay, just a second. I'll tell you. Yes, two products is correct here. The product we get here in this reaction is this OH over here. One methyl group is already present here, right? 
so this is what this is a chiral carbon right and this is also a chiral carbon we have two chiral carbon here yes but what happens here this con this carbon has two possible configuration that is r and s but this one won't have two possible configuration because this is a wedge dash representation right so configuration of this is fixed this carbon the configuration is fixed because it is given this wedge representation it can be r or s any one you can consider you cannot consider r and s both for this particular carbon it can be r or s if you have this molecule suppose double bond o and one methyl group present with the same reaction then the product would be this oh and methyl this methyl you can consider here two possible configuration of this because this is also has two chiral carbon so if this one is r this one is r if this one is s this one is s this one is r this one is s and if this one is r this one is s so in this case we have four possible combinations that we have r r r s then we have s r s r and s s these are the four possible combination we have for this particular compound because this is not fixed this is not fixed when it is fixed so it can be either r or s suppose i am assuming i am assuming r this one assuming the configuration of this is r okay so what we what we can write this one could be r and the first one could be s this one could be r or s second one is always r so r r s r combination two possible combination answer is the number of products are two in this reaction okay understood can i move on next write down derivative of acid aldehyde ketone we have discussed with lilh4 now the derivative of acid rc double bond ol with lilh4 so i have already told you whenever you see lilh4 you should consider this h minus and this h minus attacks onto this carbon atom it forms rc o minus h and since this is the leaving group l so when this lone pair converts into pi bond here the leaving groups goes out and it converts into rc double bond o h plus l minus but we have aldehyde so this further get reduced into get reduced into r ch2 oh so with lilh4 it is understood that we are using h plus h2 there is no doubt about it h plus h2o in the second step it is understood that we'll use it clear no doubt leaving group can be what cl br i o r o p h etc all these can be the leaving group
what is the product we get here first? First, this converts into right, so no. converts into mm -hmm. aldehyde, and then it converts into CS three CH two OH. Okay, a reagent. I am not writing it down. It is understood now. What reagent we are using? If you take ester. This converts into CS three CH two C double bond OH and CS three O minus takes H plus from the solvent converts into CS three OH. Further, it gets reduced into CS three CH two CH two OH. Done. So, is there any way to stop it after the first step? Just keep it as an aldehyde. Uh, with okay. LiAlH four, is not possible. It will eventually gives you alcohol. But we have some catalyst, some reagents. With that, we can uh, do this. Okay, we'll discuss that later. We can use, uh, you know, poison the catalyst so that the activity or the reactivity of the catalyst reduces, and in that case, it is possible. But with LiAlH4, we eventually get alcohol. So with Grignard reagents, sir. So we had the same reaction, right? There, you said only if it's excess alcohol. But that is not reducing a reaction, no. We are discussing about reduction reaction. So in reduction reaction with LiAlH4, you won't get uh, aldehyde. With RNGx, it's possible, but that reaction is not reduction reaction. Yes. Are you getting? It? Yes. Okay, that is. We can use one, uh, you know, uh, weaker, uh, you know, uh, this thing reducing agent. That is dibal AH, diisobutyl aluminium hydride. Okay. So in that case, we'll discuss. We'll discuss that also. But here with LiAlH4, it is not possible. So, so with DiBalH, you'll stop at aldehyde rate if you don't take it in excess. Yeah, that actually because of the hindrance, its reactivity is less. So that that gives aldehyde in that reaction. Okay. Sir. Okay. So we'll discuss DiBalH also later on, not now. Right. But with LiAlH4, you won't get aldehyde as the final product. Okay. Okay. Now you see one thing here. Till now we have discussed that OH minus is a very poor leaving group, right? And that's why alcohol goes under protonation reaction, and then H2O goes out leaving group and as leaving group and forms carbocation. And that is what we have discussed so far, right? But here, what happens? In case of LiAlH4 H plus H2O, OH minus also goes out as a leaving group. But it does not mean it is a good leaving group. It is not a good leaving group. But we don't have any choice here. Right? So what happens in this reaction, you see, first of all, it gets reduced into acid reduced into aldehyde. And then aldehyde reduced into alcohol. So this is the reaction we have overall. Okay, what happens with uh, uh, LiAlH4? The H minus it comes here, attacks onto this carbon atom. This goes up, and it forms RCO minus HOH here. Okay, now. When this lone pair comes back to form a pi bond here, 
then we have only two choice either h minus goes out or oh minus goes out so oh minus is the negative charge on oxygen in case of oh minus is more stable than the negative charge on hydrogen like h minus right that's why oh minus relatively is a better living group goes out and forms aldehyde oh minus and this is taken up by li plus of li alh4 forms li oh after this you know the mechanism rcho converts into rch2h right on the negative charge on oxygen the negative charge on oxygen is more stable than then the negative charge on hydrogen atom the negative charge on hydrogen atom hence oh minus goes out as a leaving group hence oh minus goes out as a leaving group correct hmm. so acids also converts into aldehyde and then aldehyde into alcohol with li alh4 yeah but um, just a second we'll finish uh, one more reaction just last reaction we'll finish and then we'll take a break just a second the last one before the break you see for anhydride anhydride is rc double bond o oc double bond o ch3 so this is also a good living group right this is also a good living group with li lh4 h plus h2o it gives you r ch4 first of all plus ch3 c double bond o oh this again reduce into ch3cho reduce into ch3ch2oh this reduce into rch2oh any doubt in this sir how do we know which side leaves so here aha uh -huh, that's what that's what i wanted to ask as well which one is the levy group that's what i so it doesn't asked. matter right no it it does matter no ch3co is the leaving group suppose suppose if it if it is unsymmetrical then the, if this h minus attacks onto this you will get ch3cho correct and if this h and, and if this attacks under this you'll get suppose etcoch3 correct so if it is unsymmetrical so you have to see where this h minus attacks suppose you are you are you know thinking that it doesn't matter here but it does matter when you take li ald4 right chatanya in that yeah, case a smaller group right because positive charge is still there why smaller group So because a bigger group will donate electron and that positive See, charge. See, there are be... yes, correct, correct, Richard. The point is what it is nucleophilic addition type. No, it is nucleophilic addition. One very important and interesting comparison we have on this only. We'll discuss that later, not now. Okay, 
you see it is nucleophilic addition correct so it depends upon it depends upon the positive charge density on this carbon atom agreed right you can tell me sir why not steric hindrance you are considering suppose we have et present here and ch3 i would say h minus will attack onto this right so et and ch3 the different groups steric hindrance we won't compare here why because suppose it is first of all it is nucleophilic addition nucleophilic addition involves what the positive charge density on this carbon atom first of all and if suppose size is also big then hydrogen the attacking particle the size is very small are you getting me that's why the hindrance won't affect much the hindrance or the crowding around this carbonyl carbon won't affect much this reaction we that's why we consider the positive charge density on this carbonyl carbon did you get it so so if yeah so if it's unsymmetrical then what will happen like where will the h attack I'll, i'll take one example i'll take one example right so what you need to check here you need to check the one with the group the group which shows lesser i effect plus i effect in that case only the positive charge density on this carbon will be more i'll take an example and i'll try to make you understand this suppose we have ch3 ch2 c double bond o o c double bond o and then i'll take here ch3 okay l i l d4 h plus h2 right so this d minus d minus attacks on the carbon atom which has more positive charge density right which has more positive charge density so here we have plus i effect of ch3 here we have plus i effect of ethyl group so which one has more plus i effect obviously ethyl because larger group shows more plus i effect right then this this will donate more electron and hence this will reduce the positive charge density on the carbon atom more and hence this d minus attacks on this carbon any doubt So it will attack on the one which shows lesser I effect, basically. Lesser group, you can say, or basically lesser plus I effect. Yes. Lesser plus I effect. Correct. Anyone is thinking about hyper conjugation here? even hyper conjugation will give you the same answer right anyway like ch3 has more alpha hydrogen right that's why what we say that smaller group takes the h minus of or d minus of li al d4 so, so could you tell me the product like yeah. chloro like if i had if i had ch2f on the left side then it will go there right Ah, uh, right. Then you can see, see comparison will be done. There will be something like suppose if you write down CS three and here CS two F, then here it will attack. Means the com the question you will get so that you can compare means contradictory contradiction won't be there. Like it's not like two factors are opposing. In that case, it is difficult to understand or to you know you know to you know decide where this H minus or D minus will attack. Suppose if you you are talking about this one, if you take this one. CH two F C double bond O O C double bond O CH three. So in that case, obviously this D minus will attack on this carbon because because we have a minus I effect increases the positive charge density over here. Clear? No doubt. Tell me the product in this reaction. the product we get here is ch3 so propanol and c double bond od 
प्लस ई टी सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ ओ एच करेक्ट नाउ दिस कन्वर्ट्स इन टू सी एच थ्री सी एच ओ एच डी सपोज यहाँ आई एम यूजिंग एल आई ए एल एच फोर एच प्लस एच टू देन यू गेट एच ये इफ यू यूज एल आई एल डी फोर देन इट इज अगेन डी ओवर हियर करेक्ट सेम थिंग दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन एल आई एल एच फोर सो ई टी सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ एंड एच देन इट कन्वर्ट्स इन टू ई टी सी एच टू ओ एच no doubt in this sir bol na hmm so if in the question they give like nil d4 only in the first step and then hmm. after that they don't give anything so we assume nil d4 for ha ah, in that case it is understood that you have to assume nil d4 only and okay. anyways you will have options like that but suppose here if i do not write anything okay then it is understood that this is what we are using in the next step okay generally they give this kind of compound because you know when they give you this you see this carbon becomes what becomes chiral okay. carbon yeah. chiral carbon right and then we can have two more products here possible so when they ask the number of products including stereo isomers they can change this d and h okay got it Yes. One more, just last, you know, example of this. So, tell me the product in this reaction. Uh, the question is this. First carbon and second carbon. Where this H minus attacks? So the pair of first one or second one? First. The first one. Because this group shows minus minus one, and this group shows. because it is at meta position right of course here the positive density will be more so the product would be what benzene ring choh correct yes this is the product you get no doubt fine guys so we'll take a break now after the break we'll see the reactions of amide okay we'll resume the session at 6:35 take a break
Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so we have discussed and I dried. The next one is amide. So in case of amide, what happens? It is uh, different types of reaction it gives. One thing you need to uh, keep in mind is what? The functional group in which nitrogen is present, right, in which nitrogen is present, this gives primary amine in the reaction. Okay, primary amine. So this on reaction with LiAlH4, H plus H2O converts into this. Double bond O, you need to replace by two hydrogen here, where this both hydrogen comes from LiAlH4, this one. Both hydrogen comes from LiAlH4. Now for this reaction, the condition is what? The condition is this is again we have NH2 here. The condition is the nitrogen at least contains at least contains one hydrogen more than one is fine but if there is no hydrogen present here then the reaction is not possible okay so this is the overall reaction whenever you have nitrogen containing functional group you will get one degree amine as the product, you won't get alcohol. So this one simple thing you must remember. We'll discuss mechanism also. But yes, mechanism, from mechanism you get to know that this high two hydrogen comes from LiAlH4, which is the only important thing. Okay, how this reaction proceeds, you see. The first step of this reaction is RC double bond OnH2 with H minus and this hydride ion comes from LiAlH4. This attacks onto this carbon and this goes up onto this oxygen. So we have our CO minus H and then NH2 lone pair on this nitrogen. To neutralize this O minus here we can write here Li plus. Next step, what happens? This lone pair forms a pi bond here, and this takes this electron pair and moves out as LiO minus. Okay, so this forms our C double bond NH, H and H here, with positive charge on this nitrogen atom plus LiO minus. We get. Now this LiO minus takes H plus from this, leaves this bond pair of electron behind, and it forms imine RCH double bond NH. We'll get imine plus LiOH. This hydrogen is the hydrogen of nitrogen atom. This one. So what happens if this hydrogen is not present? here, two hydrogen is not present here, at least one is not present here, then this LiO minus won't take this hydrogen and the further reaction is not possible. Imine won't form in the reaction. Right? This is imine. Okay. After this, again, H minus from LiAlH4 this behaves as a nucleophile, attacks onto the carbon atom, 
and this electron jumps over here. You see this H is coming from LiLH4. This H is coming from LiLH4. So the carbon atom which takes two hydrogen here, both hydrogen comes from LiLH4. And this we have single bond NH negative charge. So in the last step, what happens with the solvent H plus H2O, this protonates the nitrogen atom here and this convert into RCH H NH2. So important point here that you have to memorize that this hydrogen comes from solvent H2O and the other two hydrogen, this one and this one, it comes from Li Al H4. Got it? So nitrogen containing functional group gives you one degree amine with LiLH4 on reduction. Done. Okay. Similarly, you see if you have cyanide R C triple bond N. with LiLH4, H plus H2O. With cyanide, we again get one degree amine, amine that is CH2, NH2. Both hydrogen on carbon comes from LiLH4. These two hydrogen comes from solvent. If you have imine, this reaction we have already seen. The mechanism of this C H double bond NH this is imine with the same reagent it converts into R C H 2 NH 2 again one degree amine nitro group R N O 2 R N H 2 you will get one degree amine Oxime RCH double bond and one lone pair on this nitrogen atom and OH here. Oxime converts into RCH2 NH2. Okay, so just you need to know this reaction. Wherever we have nitrogen containing functional group, this gives you amine in the reaction. Write down the product in this two reaction. So could you go back to the previous slide for a second? Just, just a second. Okay. Yes, thank so, you, sir. One more thing.
So the priority in the first one is what? R C H two N H two. So, so in, in this mechanism, can there be any ring expansion or anything like that? No, no, yeah. nothing, nothing. You don't have carbocation. Okay. Remember this thing here. This H is coming from uh, the solvent, right? So if uh, I just change this so that if you revise it, you will get it. Suppose if you use here D plus D two O with Li LH four, then you will get here N D not N H. Okay. Okay, next you see epoxide. Reaction on epoxide. Is exactly similar to the RMGX reaction we have. Okay, so we have suppose CH2, CH2, just two example we'll see CH2, CH2. Li AlH four H plus H two O. The product here we get is CH two CH two OH one H here. This hydrogen, this hydrogen, this comes from Li AlH four. And this one comes from the solvent that is H two. How does it happen? You see this H minus. This attacks on the carbon atom, and the ring open up. This O minus takes H plus from water gives you this. So this is the terminal carbon here, the last one, which takes this hydrogen from LiAlH four. So we have this product. Okay. So, what is the product? Huh. So could you go back to the previous slide? I have a question. Just a second. The product in this one with the same reagent. Sir. Hmm. Uh, like in that second thing, R C H N H. Uh, hmm. If we took LiAl D four, then hmm. would it be R C H D N H two or R C D two N H two? No, where see this carbon here, the carbon, the two hydrogen is coming from, or hydrogen is coming from LiAl H four only. So if you so take both. here LiAl D four, then it will be R C H two D N H two. Correct. I didn't understand. Could you tell me again? Okay. I'll write down it. See, on the carbon, the hydrogen is coming from uh, LiAlH4. Correct? Yes. So if you have this one, R C H double bond NH reaction with LiAl D4. H plus H two O. Then the product would be R C H D N H two. Okay. So what? Don't. Okay. Doesn't both the hydrogens come from L I L H four? So it will be C D two then in that case. No, we have already C H no. Oh. Okay. Amine has already formed. Okay. After this, we have L I L H four. But if you use here L I L H four. With H plus H, sorry, uh, H plus with D plus D two. Then N D two. In that case, it will be R C H two. 
then n h already we have and d oh n h d coming from the solvent Okay. So in the first example, then it'll either be like CD2 or ND2, depending on the thing. Right? The first one you're talking about? Yeah, RCN. This one? No, sir. The same slide. RCN. If we take a LILD4, ah, then it'll be ND2. Yeah, the two hydrogen is from this one. This two hydrogen is from solvent, and this two is from LILH4. Okay, sir. So basically, you see what happens. From here, you'll get imine first. And then this imine converts into amines. So this is the intermediate product you'll get in this reaction. So it is two step reaction from one from this to this and second from this to this. So finally you'll get from this to this. Okay. You want me to write down the mechanism of it. Okay. See, just, just two minutes. See, we have R C triple bond N. So with L I A L H four, you will get hydride ion H minus. So this H minus attacks onto this carbon atom, pi electron shift over here. So the R C H double bond N and negative charge on it. So this will get protonate by the solvent. R C H N H. Correct. Again, what happens? The same thing. H minus from the L I L H four attacks onto this. This comes over here. So RCH2, single bond NH, negative charge. Last step, could you tell me? So you see what happens from where this H minus and this H minus are coming. It is coming from LiLH4 only. But nitrogen is getting protonate by the solvent. You see, by the solvent. Correct. What is the product in this reaction? This one. Will be propanol. Hmm. So propanol. Yeah. Propane to all, correct? Yeah, to all, sir. So it would be CH three CH OH CH two H. The source of this hydrogen. What? And the source of this hydrogen. This one from LiLH four. LiLH four. And this one from the solvent. So this H minus from LiAlH4, like R minus in RNGX, this will attack on the less hindered side. Okay, and then this comes over. Okay, now the next one. Write down the reduction of alkene and alkyne. The reduction of alkene and alkyne. See if I write down this to reaction. Sir, so could could you go to the last page? Just one sec. Last page is this. This one, right? No, no, yeah, yes, so this one. So, uh, why does it attack on the second one again? It's the same reason as RMGX. Yes, yes, less in that side. Okay. Both way you can think. Less hindered plus the, the plus i of this reduce the positive charge density here. Attack will be less. Tendency will be less. Epoxide ring may we always consider a uh, hindrance. The site of attack must be, must not be sterically hindered. Okay, done. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So 
alkene and alkyne you look at these two reaction uh r ch double bond ch ch3 with li alh4 and i'll take one alkyne with li alh4 so this also this is no reaction this also gives no reaction in both of the reaction uh, the you know reaction the product won't form the reaction is not possible at all okay even for alcohol also we have the same thing with li alh4 it won't give any reaction with alcohol cannot reduce alcohol why it it uh, does not happen here because this li alh4 gives h minus right so this h minus is the a nucleophilic uh, end right and here also we have electron cloud because of pi bond pi bond lone pair electron cloud right so this won't attack onto these two carbon atom because of the electron cloud only already present around the carbon atom over here right so when h minus comes over here this pi electron this pi electron this lone pair repels this hydride ion and hence the reduction of alkene and kyne alcohol is not possible okay but if you consider this reaction r ch double bond ch2 this on reaction with li alh4 alcl3 with h plus h2 i forgot to tell you one thing over here mm. i ah, see this h plus h2 that we are using here it is an acidic solution h plus h2 that we are using so we can also use instead of h plus h2 suppose nh 4 cl if it is written in the second step this also serves the same purpose here why because nh 4 cl it is first of all it is acidic solution acidic hydrolysis nh 4 cl in water it is also an acidic solution why because it is the salt of what strong acid hcl and weak base nh4oh are you getting me so the hydrolysis of this or this salt on hydrolysis gives acidic solution yes or no acidic solution means h plus water already present over there so h2 so if you write li alh4 then nh4cl in water or simply nh4cl also they write sometimes or h plus h2o both serves the same purpose you'll get the same product into this got it yes this yes. you must take care of uh, sometimes they'll give you nh4cl also in the next step so it is a salt of a strong acid and weak base so serves the same purpose on hydrolysis it gives acidic solution only important this one also okay with alcl3 the reaction here the product we get here is rch2 r ch2 ch3 alkene okay and in this alkene this hydrogen on the middle carbon this comes from li alh4 and this comes from the solvent Now, first of all, why does it happen, or how does it happen? Why, in presence of AlCl3, 
the reaction is possible. So AlCl3 is Lewis acid, first of all. The structure that you see for AlCl3, it has three sigma bond and one vacant orbital. So because of this vacant orbital only, it behaves as a Lewis acid. Okay. So what happens here, this RCH double bond CH2, double bond CH2, it donates this pi electron into this vacant orbital of this aluminum and it forms a cyclic three-membered intermediate ring. Okay. CH, CH2, and here aluminum attached with chlorine, chlorine, and chlorine like this. Right. Here we have delta positive and delta negative over here. Now, in this case, what happens? Now, the advantage of this is AlCl3 that it creates a non classical carbocation here. We always consider secondary, more stable one, not this one, okay? Non classical carbocation it creates. And hence, further, H minus from LiLH4 can attack onto this carbon. And when this attacks over here, this comes onto this aluminium. So here after this, it is type of epoxide. But remember one thing in, in, in epoxide, this attacks on the less hindered carbon atom. But here, since we have non-classical carbocation, so two degree we are considering here. So this will attack on this two degree, not on the terminal carbon. This bond comes over here, the ring opens up and this converts into, and this converts into RCH, Single bond H. What is the previous page? Yes, yes, just a second. Let me just finish this. AlCl3 and negative charge on this aluminium. Further, what happens? AlCl3 negative charge here. Carbon atom, what it what happens here? This carbon atom drags this bond pair of electron towards the side. And the reason for this is the electronegativity of carbon is more than to that of aluminium. That is why it happens and this becomes neutral and we get here RCH, H, CH2, lone pair negative charge on it like we had in the case of um, uh, amines, NH2. In the last step with H plus H2O, protonation takes place and this gets protonates, converts into RCH, CH2, H, H where this hydrogen comes from on the secondary carbon comes from LiLH4 and this hydrogen comes from solvent that is water. I'll come back again to this page. Let me go back first and copy this down. So in presence of Lewis acid, it is possible, but when you do not have Lewis acid, then that carbocation, non-classical carbocation won't form and the pi electron cloud repels the hydro, hydride ion that comes from the reducing agent and hence the reaction is not possible. Thank so you. is the reaction important? I mean like the mechanism? No, mechanism is not important. You just need to know, see why we are discussing mechanism. The whole purpose is this only, from where this hydrogen and this hydrogen is coming. So if you can keep these two in mind that this is coming from solvent, this is coming from the reducing agent, this is it. Right. Okay, sir. Or the, so, there is no role of mechanism here. Yes. So what about a, symmet like, uh, a symmetrical alkenes in that? How do we figure out which one takes which? We have to see the stability of carbocation. The basic thing is that, okay, if it is symmetrical, then I think both way you will get the same product. But overall, okay. this, if this is more stable, then this will attack on it. Stability of carbocation. Which is Okay, However, it is not non, it is not a classical carbocation. It is partially developed. But then also stability will consider and will attack H minus onto that. Yes. Okay. One more thing, AlCl3, you see, it is not getting consumed in the reaction. Okay. Plus, we get here AlCl3 also. So it gets released, right? So it is behaving as a what? Catalyst in the reaction.
Dan? Saya suara. No, no, no. It is the reaction of alkene. Any alkene goes under this reaction, this kind of reaction. Yes, yes. Any alkene you can use. Done. For alkyne also, the whole process is same. Only the reaction takes place twice. Means first we'll get alkene and then alkene converts into alkane. Same thing we have. So we have suppose RC, triple bond C, CH3 with the same reagent LiAlH4, AlCl3, H plus H2O. First, it converts into RCH double bond CH, single bond CH3. And then in the next step with the same reagent, we get R CH2, CH2, CH3. Okay, so these are the reactions of LiAlH4. We covered almost all the reaction of LiAlH4. Now the next reducing agent we have, that is NaBH4. NaBH4, like LiAlH4, it is also a complex compound. Write down the second one, NaBH4, sodium borohydride. Right, SBH also we call it as in short that is sodium borohydride. Okay, the structure is same, we have Na plus and BH4 minus. Minus. I have already told you that this bond, the BH bond strength is more than more than the bond strength of LiH because it is because it is less ionic less ionic, more bond strength less ionic, more bond strength means NaBH4, the bond, you can, it is difficult to dissociate the bond and hence NaBH4 is a, write down, is a weaker reducing agent than LiAlH4. First of all, this is the thing. Write down, it cannot reduce NaBH4 can not reduce ester. Cannot reduce ester. It can reduce NaBH4 can reduce uh, aldehyde, ketone, Acid halide. Okay, acid halide. Now, it is also nucleophilic addition type reaction. The nucleophile is H minus again. 
that attacks and the reaction. So can you go proceeds. back to the previous slide? Yes, sir. Done. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, if we compare the rate of the reaction, right on the question, compare the rate of reaction with respect to. With respect to the first one, Li AlH four, and the second one, NaBH four. For the compound, we have R C double bond OCl A, R C double bond OOR B. R C double bond O H C R C double bond O C H three D. Done. Yes. Sir. What is the order with respect to Li LH four? The yes. order with respect to Li LH four is, see, it is nucleophilic addition type. So we have to check the positive charge density here on this carbon and on this carbon. Cl shows minus i. This shows plus m. This shows no effect. Here we have plus i. Tell me where we have the maximum uh, positive charge density. Sorry. A. In case of a minus i effect. Hence, the rate of the reaction it is maximum for A. Then we have C, then we have D, and then we have B, according to the positive charge density on the carbonyl carbon. If we talk about NaBH4, then we know NaBH4 can't reduce ester, so we just have to eliminate the second compound. Order is this. So, but. Uh... Like, should can't we also do it just by seeing which is the best leaving group for LiLH4? No, it's not. Yes. See, rate of the reaction depends upon the rate determining step. Correct. If you remember, is the, the carbocation, the reactions in which the carbocation forms, will compare the stability of carbocation there for to compare the rate of the reaction. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes. So why do we consider the stability of carbocation there? Because the formation of carbocation is the slowest step. That is the rate determining step. So rate we always compare with the rate determining step. So here in this case, the nucleophilic addition reaction, the rate determining step is the attack of H minus ion. That you should know, and this one is experimental. That you. Cannot find out logical by looking at the reaction simply. Okay, so like you have remember that 
carbocation formation is the rate remaining step for example like you know addition of hbr or dehydration reaction of alcohol here also the nucleophilic addition reaction the rate determining step or the slowest step is the attack of nucleophile that is h minus or r minus in case of rng clear yes sir right so this is also very simple similar to uh, li lh4 so if you want to write down the product of this rc double bond oh nabh4 h plus h2 it converts into r ch2 oh if you take ketone this converts into secondary alcohol rchoh all those things are same from where h are coming on to this carbon and oxygen atom okay so i am not discussing all those things again and again it is exactly same acyl chloride also first converts into aldehyde then converts into alcohol Yeah. If they ask you this question, that rate you need to compare with respect to the reagent, LiBH four, LiAlH four, or NaBH four. obviously the answer will be li alh4 because it is a stronger reducing agent forms h minus faster and hence can react also faster with a faster rate okay now the next the third reagent we have important it is catalytic hydrogenation A reduction through through catalytic hydrogenation. Okay, so this is used for unsaturated compounds. Unsaturated compounds, like for example. we can talk about alkene we can talk about alkyne unsaturated we can talk about cyanide we can talk about ketone for catalytic hydrogen hydrogenation suppose you are considering uh, aldehyde or ketone right so i would request uh, i would suggest you what that this c double bond o you consider as c double bond c only because the pattern of the reaction is exactly same suppose you are considering cyanide consider this as alkyne only the reaction the way the reaction takes place here and here similarly it takes place here and here nothing much okay how the reaction takes place we'll see this one okay alkene you see first of all alkene so if you look at this reaction c double bond c and catalytic hydrogenation h2 ni this converts into alkene by syn addition of hydrogen atom it is syn addition of hydrogen atom exothermic or endothermic reaction sir so, 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 so,
Why endo? So because two. So sigma you break a pi bond breaking. to get two sigma. So sigma is stronger bond, no? More energy releases. So, One sigma. pi converts into two sigma. So it is exothermic. Bond formation is an exothermic process. Energy releases, and two stronger bonds are forming. Right. If you consider H H bond, if it breaks, then also one sigma and one pi converts into two sigma. Right. So a stronger, more stronger bond forms over here. More strong bond forms over here. Hence, the energy comes out exothermic. Why it is thin addition? First of all, the metal you here you see. Suppose this is the surface of metal. So hydrogen, first of all, adsorb, get adsorb on the surface of metal. Suppose this is the metal surface we have. Okay, and hydrogen is here. It is present over here. Adsorb at the surface of metal. It is adsorption. Right. When it comes closer to this alkene, then it has tendency to make a sigma bond with this hydrogen like this. So it since it is adsorbed to this surface, so this can come either from this side or from this side. It is not possible that one hydrogen is coming from this side and other hydrogen is coming from this side. And hence it is syn hydrogenation, syn addition of hydrogen. Correct. So hydrogenation of alkene, it is syn, not anti-addition. Exothermic reaction, energy comes out. If you talk about the rate of the reaction, see the more stable alkene, the lesser will be the tendency to go under this reaction. So rate is inversely proportional to the stability of alkene. Right. And stability of alkene is directly proportional to crowding. It is because of what effect? It is because of hyperconjugation. Hyperconjugation. So more branch at the double bonded carbon atom, more will be the stability. So this is the configuration, sorry, a relation of rate we have. One second. One note you write down here. Alkyne has alkyne has lesser surface area than alkene. Alkyne has lesser surface area than alkene. And hence, it has more reactivity towards, it has more reactivity towards hydrogenation reaction. Basically, alkyne is more reactive. This you need to keep in mind. Because both, both carbon atoms are sp hybridized, so they are concentrated in a small region, relatively. And hence, the rate of the reaction is more over there. So can you repeat it again, the statement? Alkyne has lesser surface area than alkene. And hence, the rate of the reaction of alkyne, rate of hydrogenation reaction, you write down, rate of hydrogenation reaction of alkyne is more than to that of alkene. Okay, then this is very important and you'll get different, different types of questions on this. Okay, suppose first of all, you need to compare the rate of these alkenes. Could you tell me the rate? H C H2 double bond CH2. 
CS3, CH double bond, CH2. And then we have CS3, CH double bond, CH, CS3. Order of rate. The increasing order, right? For the first one. Okay. So I'm asking you have to put it in increasing order, right? Any any order, increasing, decreasing. That's okay. not a difference. Okay, we know as crowding increases, the rate of the reaction decreases because rate and crowding is inversely proportional. One thing, second thing, alkene, if it is more stable, it won't undergo, it has less tendency to go under the hydrogenation reaction. So order of reaction is this. This alkene is more stable, this is more reactive. Alkyne and alkene, if you have, you can go with alkyne always. Go with alkyne always. This one is more stable because of conjugation. So, order is this. Rate of the reaction. Done. Now the addition is sin. So if you say, if you take cis alkene, for example, CS3, C double bond, C, CH3, H and H, D2 Ni, for example, D2 Ni. So cis alkene goes under syn addition gives erythro compound right cis syn erythro erythro means both the d present on the same side this is erythro optically inactive due to internal compensation meso compound it is Right? If you take trans alkene, D2 Ni, trans on cis addition gives 3O, TST. Okay? 3O means both D will write here like this. Addition is sin only, but will write this way. And we'll have a mirror image of this also. So here we get enantiomers. Resting mixture. 
these two are enantiomers of each other. Optically inactive due to external compensation. Done. So in the previous slide, could you explain the third question? I didn't get that. Wait. Third one. This one. So the rate one, yeah. Can't we say a triple bond would be harder to break? No, no, no. See, it's not like the bond dissociation thing we are considering. We are considering the surface area of this. Lesser surface area means this pi electron is concentrated in a small region. Hence, it can take the H hydrogen atom easily towards it. That's why the reason that we say alkyne has lesser surface area than alkene. The pi electrons are concentrated in a smaller region relatively. Hence, can take the hydrogen atom easily on this, like can attach the hydrogen atom to it easily. That's why the reduction, the rate of the reduction is easier for alkyne and then alkene. More rate of the reduction here. Okay, sir. Thank you. So reason sometimes they ask you this theoretical question also in the exam. The reason is lesser surface area that you must write. All other things comes because of that surface area only. Okay. Okay, so CSE and TST, right? Cis, sin, erythro, trans, sin, trio. Erythro is meso, optically inactive. Trio is optically active. Overall, it is optically inactive. Rest mixture, enantiomers. What is the product we get in this reaction? one equivalent H2 Ni. See, this alkene, this pi sigma pi is in conjugation, more stable, less will be the rate of the reaction. But this pi is comparatively less stable. So reaction takes place at this carbon-carbon double bond. Since we have only one equivalent, so we have to select like this, where the reaction is taking place. These two double bond will be as it is, and the two hydrogen attached like this, syn addition on these two carbon atoms. Is it fine? That's the same property, right? Yes, rate of the reaction of alkene, uh, you know, is inversely proportional to the stability. The stability of this pi sigma pi is more because of conjugation. This one is not in conjugation. So less stable, more will be the rate of the reaction. Correct? Yes, so we can say about crowding also here, right? Crowding also you can consider. Yeah, obviously. Here we have less crowding, so more rate of the reaction. Same thing. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, if you have this compound, the application of this is huge actually, this one, uh, you know, hydrogenation reaction. You look at different, different types of compound in the question. H2, Ni, again, one equivalent I'm using. What is the product we get here? H2, Ni, one equivalent. H2 Ni1 equivalent. 
So you see in this one, the product would be this because the compound becomes aromatic now. No doubt. If you have butadiene like this, okay, then it gives one comma four addition product TCP. Hydrogen here, hydrogen here on the same side. It is TCP thermodynamically controlled product, one comma four addition. Okay, first and fourth position. the addition takes place if you have alkene and alkyne both present in a compound then we know the rate of the reaction of reaction of what Al alkyne is, is more than to that of alkene so the first reaction takes place at alkyne you'll get a diene further if you have if you add one more equivalent of h2 ni then it converts into tcp that is 1 comma 4 addition product and the product of the reaction would be this so uh, why is this product formed like this tcp product 1 comma 4 yes sir. it goes under resonance actually and hence this point and this is the most stable form we'll get when you draw the resonating structure so that takes part in the reaction okay got it yes sir okay now um uh, suppose we have alkyne and we take this reaction h2 ni uh, excess delia bahut jata so what we get here we get first alkene right and what kind of alkene cis alkene both hydrogen attached from the same side further it again goes under reduction reaction and it converts into converts into an alkene this is the product we get so finally we are getting alkene into this if you have if you have enough of h2 ni if you take in this reaction so from alkyne we are getting alkene suppose if you want to obtain alkene suppose if you want to stop the reaction over here further if you don't want to go then what we need to do for this correct are you getting my point we want alkene from alkyne not alkene then what we need to do we need to reduce the activity of this catalyst ni because if it is active then it continues with the reaction and eventually we'll get an alkene here right so when we need to reduce the reactivity you can say or activity is the better word we should use over here catalyst the activity of catalyst we need to reduce okay which is also the active mass active mass is nothing but uh, you know we take it as concentration but there is uh, you know a difference in these two terms okay we'll discuss this in chemical kinetics what is the uh, active mass of a catalyst suppose the surface of the
bro may or mute your mic da oh okay sorry just i saw the message you know that's why hello yes sir yes sir yes sir can you hear me now yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Oh, yeah yes sir. yes sir i don't know i lost my connection somehow anyways so we were talking about this um uh, uh okay yeah so we were talking about if you want to get an alkene from alkyne right then what we should do so i was talking what the college text or whatever it attend at all the school um so your voice is breaking at least for me even for me also for me yes, sir it's break yes yeah, sir same for me so hello hello ah uh, hello yes sir yes sir okay yes sir so so yeah so i was talking about this uh, active surface here correct so you have suppose another molecule obviously this is one reactant another reactant or catalyst we have so on this also we have some active surface area present right so when the collision takes place between the active surface area of the molecule then there will be you no know, the possibility of product will be there i cannot say that the product will form in that case that is one of the criteria 
this we call it as orientation barrier of the reactant molecule okay orientation barrier means the, when the molecules when they are colliding with each other they should collide in a proper orientation so that the collision takes place between the active surface area of the molecule so if it happens then this condition is satisfied orientation barrier is you know is fulfilled over there plus there is one more condition that we call it as energy barrier okay if these two conditions are satisfied then only the reactant converts into product okay so we are concerned here we are concerned with this area this active surface area of the catalyst here so if you reduce the active surface area obviously the chances for this you know a proper orientation would be less and hence that will reduce the possibility of forming of product and hence the rate of the reaction also reduces reduces both thing the possibility also plus rate of the reaction also so point is if you reduce the surface area of this catalyst ni then the rate of the reaction reduces right its activity reduces correct since alkyne is more reactive than alkene then this alkyne will manage in manage to react with this hydrogen and convert into alkene but we know alkene is lesser reactive than alkyne plus the catalyst is also not that active because we have reduced the activity of catalyst so it is also not that active this also lesser reactive than alkene alkyne sorry alkyne hence this conversion is not possible in that case right so to sum up this what we can say if you want to obtain alkene from alkyne not an alkene then we have to reduce the activity of catalyst and for that purpose and for that reason we poison the catalyst okay we call it as the poisoning of catalyst so when you do this poisoning that will reduce the activity of catalyst the active surface area but alkyne is enough reactive it will even in that case also it reacts with this converts into alkene but further the activity is not the reactivity is not that great for an alkene and further reaction is hindered in that case restricted right so this you know the alkene we can obtain from alkyne by poisoning the catalyst by reducing the active surface area of the catalyst the activity of the catalyst okay so how do we do this suppose we have a reaction yes, r yes r c triple bond c r2 right two reactions we have here h2 with ni and this ni is poisoned with baso4 this is the poisoning of catalyst to reduce the surface area h2 with ni h2 with ni and it is poisoned hey. sorry cso3 okay poison with cso3 so this in this way you will get alkene as the final product you won't get alkene in this reaction so the product would be a cis alkene r1 c double bond c r2 h and h cis alkene okay this uh, you know reagent h2 pd with baso4 we call it as rosenmund catalyst you must have heard about it rosenmund's reaction yes yes sir this is rodem rosenmund catalyst this also we use the question param you were asking that time this reagent also we use to convert acid halide into aldehyde it won't reduce further aldehyde into alcohol got it yes sir so right. what is the exact difference between this and lindner's catalyst ha huh. lindner's catalyst we, we are using different reagent that is it nothing much both gives cis alkene into this both reduces see the purpose of this is what to reduce, to reduce the activity no so we we have different different molecules which we use to reduce the activity of this so when we use cso3 it is lindner's catalyst when we use this it is rosenmund's catalyst that is it nothing much okay you see this one with cso3 it is lindler's catalyst so 
So different reagent we are using here, CaCO3 and BaSO4. The purpose is same that in both cases we'll get cis alkene, not an alkene. Correct. Okay, One note you write down here. If you want to obtain alkene from alkyne, if you want to obtain alkene from alkyne, we need to reduce the activity of catalyst we need to reduce the activity of catalyst comma write down the poisoning of catalyst write down the poisoning of catalyst reduces the surface area of the catalyst, the active surface area, I write down, reduces the active surface area of catalyst and hence the rate of the reaction. With this poison catalyst, write down, with this poison catalyst, the alkenes are not much reactive with this poison catalyst. The alkenes are not much reactive so that they can react and convert into alkene. Alkenes are not much reactive so that they can react and convert into alkene. Hence, eventually we get cis alkene as the product. Cis alkene as the product. Got it. So H2 Ni BaSO4 or H2 PD BaSO4 also we can take. H2 Ni CaCO3. These are Rosenmund and Lindler's catalyst respectively. Correct. Gives cis alkene. Now this reaction you see. Suppose we have an alkyne, CH3C triple bond, CCH3. The reaction of this with H2, H2PD, BASO4 gives A. And when this A reacts with Br2CCl4 gives B. What is A and B? The first A is what? A would be C a cis alkene. Yeah. So C double bond C, CH3, and both H attach on this side. Now, on this reaction with Br2CCl4, what it gives? Cis addition. gives cis on sin addition gives what? Erythro compound. 
So we'll get here erythro compound. So the product would be Br. So Br to CCl4 is anti-addition, right? One just a second. Uh, yes, sir. So it'll be CA. A cat, 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 no, cat. We'll get cat. Yeah, it gives three. So what we get here? This gives you two products. Both B are on the opposite side, right? H, H, CS3, CS3, and we'll get a mirror image of it. So this is what this is. Resmic mixture, enantiomers, all those things you already know. We have discussed many times. Okay. This is the product we get here. So like this, they can you know relate the reactions and ask the questions like this. So we have one more reaction into this that is birch reduction. Okay, we won't discuss it today. Birch reduction. So just these three reactions you keep in mind, all these three together. The first two, Rosenman Lindlers gives you cis alkene, but birch gives you trans alkene in this. Okay, this gives you trans alkene. We'll see this reaction next class. And there are some more reactions left that will finish next class, most probably this chapter. And we'll start with the alcohol, right? The few, I think 90% of the reactions of alcohol we have done. So those reactions which are left will uh, start next class only. Okay. One more thing, assignment on Learnist on this chapter, it's already uploaded. Okay, you can do that. You can do that. And one more PDF I'll share with you on the group for oxidation reduction, you must try that also. Correct, nothing no, like not much Kritika, I think uh, one and a half hour max to max, not more than that. So, so after this chapter, can we start with coordination compounds and then we'll go to alcohol? Uh, coordination Mehul will do, but uh, because we have done it, so this thing is fresh, right? So we can finish alcohol yes. quickly then. So let me finish that alcohol wala chapter and then we'll do coordination, okay? Okay, so yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir.